What's good YouTube? Welcome back. Today is Lazy Days Tubby and I'm back out again on my solo channel doing some more history reaction for you guys today. And it is some more Mongol invasions by kings and general. It is their episode Timur against the Bayezid. Against Bayezid. I'm really looking forward to finding out what they've got in store for me today. Kings and generals make amazing content and I love finding out some more about every type of history so i'm enjoying this little journey if you have any other suggestions let me know what they are in the comments box down below if you haven't already head over to kings and generals page the links in the description box down below as well and if you're enjoying my reactions looking forward to more reactions you know what you need to do you need to like comment subscribe hit that notification bell and we're going to jump straight into this one While Timur's battles across Iran, the Golden Horde and India are all noteworthy, the conqueror's most famous battle was his confrontation with the Ottoman Sultan Bayezid I at Ankara in July of 1402. Okay. An epic clash between the two mightiest rulers of the Islamic world, the onslaught Timur unleashed upon the rising Ottoman Empire nearly put an end to the House of Osman. Really? In this video, we will revisit the Battle of Ankara from the Timurid point of view. Bayezid and Timur were some of the best command. One legacy chest. While Timur was occupied for most of 1398 and early 1399, major changes happened in the West. In 1398, the death of Kedi Bahanuddin Ahmad brought Sivas into Ottoman control, and the ever expansionist Bayezid further extended his influence across eastern Anatolia, pressuring the Karamanids, taking Malatya from the Mamluks, and forcing the Emir of Azinkan, Mutahatan, to flee to Timur, bringing mm. the Ottoman Empire to the Timurid frontier. I see, I In see. June 1399, the Mamluk Sultan Barkuk died. This formidable foe was succeeded by his ten-year-old son, Faraj, which weakened the Mamluk state. After leaving India, Timur returned to Samarkand only briefly, setting out in April 1399 on his seven-year campaign. En route, he removed his son, Miran Shah, from his governorship in Sultania for erratic behavior. Then, in the last months of 1399, ravaged Georgia and wintered there. In the spring of 1400, he continued campaigning in Georgia, sacking Tbilisi again. Timur always the great Ro uh, Mon Roman, the great Mongol generals really just didn't stop campaigning, did they? Always liked to mask his movements and make it unclear where he would strike next. This uncertainty was enough to cause Sultan Ahmad to flee Baghdad again, running with Kasa Yusuf of the Karakayunlu to Bayezid. Timur did okay. not take kindly to the housing of his enemies, resting his men and horses in the pastures of modern Azerbaijan for the summer. In the autumn of 1400, he struck west into Anatolia. Capturing Ezinkan for Mutahatan, he continued towards his main target, Sivas, where Bayezid's son Suleiman was stationed. Suleiman abandoned Sivas before Timur arrived, Smart. and the city fell on September 7th after an 18-day siege. Sivas suffered a horrific massacre, its 4,000-strong oh, army and garrison really? buried alive on Timur's orders. Bayezid, who was at that time leading an ongoing blockade of Constantinople, was unable to respond before Timur left Ottoman territory. By September 15th, Timur was attacking Malatya and soon after marching through Syria. The panicked Mamluk governors of northern Syria sent desperate words to Cairo for aid, but political infighting hamstrung any from coming. All right. On the 28th of October, Timur drew his armies up outside of Aleppo. The city's viceroy, Timutash, surrendered on the 2nd of November, supplying Timur with provisions and being allowed to maintain his rule. It did not prevent Timur from sacking the city and building towers of skulls as punishment for earlier transgressions. Timur ne You don't fuck with the fucking Mongols, man! Holy shit! Timur was fucking ruthless. I think he was he was up there. He's not far off of Genghis Khan, my friend. Sent an embassy to Cairo, demanding the Sultan's submission, allegedly asking for so much tribute that one contemporary author wrote, the whole of Italy could not make so great a payment. 
and angered Sultan Faraj set out in November, in his retinue the famed scholar Ibn Khaldun, reaching Damascus on December 23rd, shortly before Timur's forces arrived on the city's outskirts. Skirmishing between the two armies continued over the remainder of December, with a larger but inconclusive engagement in the early days of January 1401. On the 6th of January, news of an uprising in Cairo convinced the young Faraj to depart under the cover of darkness, much to the chagrin of the people of Damascus. In the absence of Sultan Faraj, Damascus surrendered, though its citadel held out. Over January and February 1401, Timur continually demanded payment upon payment from Damascus, stringing them along to scrap everything of worth from the city. And then On the 16th of March, it. Timur gave permission to his men to sack Damascus. By the 17th, the city was set on fire, its craftsmen and artisans taken captive and sent to decorate Timur's capital of Samarkand. On the 19th, Timur left the charred ruins of Damascus, and soon after locusts descended on the region, destroying oh. crops and wreaking further havoc. Wow, literally just a Syria, horrible Timur time. Timur cut a northeastern path, making it look as if he was returning to Samarkand. It was so convincing that Sultan Ahmed felt it safe enough to return to Baghdad. Timur suddenly veered south, taking Mosul and sending 20,000 men under Prince Rustam to Baghdad. Are they going to catch him? Ahmed fled back to Bayezid, leaving a commander, Faraj, behind to protect the city. By the beginning of June, Baghdad was under siege, but Faraj put up fierce resistance. After a 40-day siege, suffering heavy losses under the Iraqi sun, the Timurids took the city on the 9th of July. Oh. Timur gave the order that each soldier was to bring him the heads of at least two citizens of Baghdad to be stacked into 120 towers of skulls. What the fuck? Oh my god, Timur. Timur, fucking hell. 90,000 were said to have fallen evoking the memory of Hulagu's assault nearly 150 mm. years prior. Timur spent winter 1401 in modern Azerbaijan. The Mongols were just barbaric and ruled through fear. Where he learned of Bayezid's activities. Aside from giving shelter to Sultan Ahmed, Bayezid had also retaken Sivas and Ozinkan, at the latter, capturing Mutahatan's wives and children and sending them as hostages to Bursa. Timur sent letters to Bayezid, urging him to expel Sultan Ahmed and Kari Yusuf Karakayunlu, lest he bring Timur's wrath upon him. Bayezid's response was unequivocal. To fight is our habit, to join in combat our aim, to struggle for the faith our task. Mm. Among other provocative letters, which included Timur comparing Bayezid to an ant, or Bayezid <laughs> writing his name in large gold letters with Timur's in small black letters, and threats to each other's spouses and concubines, it was clear that war was inevitable. At the start of 1402, Timur sent his grandson Abu Bakr to dislodge Sultan Ahmed from Baghdad again. Having returned only a few weeks before that, Ahmed was so surprised by the sudden attack that he only narrowly escaped on a boat, wearing nothing but a shirt and fleeing to Bayezid. At the end of April, Timur left his winter quarters in Azerbaijan, attacking Georgia en route to Anatolia. Kemmer and Azinkan fell in quick succession to Timur before he reached Sivas. Oh, Timur, Timur has a grudge, be careful. Territory, Bayezid was startled from his siege of Constantinople, abandoning it to rally his forces at Bursa. While there, he recruited a large body of Tatars from central Anatolia, inhabiting the region since the Ilkhanid period. Bayezid set out on a rapid march, stopping briefly at Ankara. There he was urged to make camp and prepare for Timur's arrival in this defensible position, a well-watered and fortified hill dominating a large plain. Mm. Loath to allow Timur to be free to raid his eastern provinces, Bayezid left a small garrison behind and sped east to reach him near Sivas, hoping to negate Timur's cavalry superiority in the mountains. At Tokat, but... northeast of Sivas, Bayezid skirmished with Timur's forward forces, but received shocking news. While drawing Bayezid east, 
Timor had cut southwest with a forced mm. march, taking Kaseri and then nearing Ankara. The Ottoman Sultan had to double back at full speed, his men tiring in the summer heat. He lost thousands on this march. Timor had a decision to make, as he either had to fight near Ankara or march towards Bayezid. Considering the terrain, he decided on the former. Part of his army besieged Ankara, while a few more units were sent to collect supplies. Okay. Never the one to miss an opportunity to increase his odds, Timur ordered the remainder of his troops to build a dam across the Kubik Creek and divert its water to the new tributary, planning to deprive the enemy of water supplies. Okay. This was okay. a difficult engineering feat to pull off, but Timur's disciplined soldiers, helped nice. by the elephants, managed nice. to do it in the span of a few days. Now, Timurid forces had all the water they needed to fight in July, while the Ottomans would not find any unless they won the battle. However, Timur underestimated his opponent. Bayezid was moving much faster than Timur expected, and arrived in the vicinity of Ankara one day earlier than predicted. Mm. Some of the Ottoman commanders advised Bayezid to attack immediately, as the Timurid forces weren't concentrated. But his troops were too tired from the forced march, and the Sultan decided to wait until the next day. This Which is fair. Exacerbated the war I think that's good, though. I think they needed to to get some uh, rest, the right? Situation and allowed Timur to recall the units he sent to forage. Sources differ on the date, but most suggest Bayezid arrived late on the 27th of July. The armies lining up on the morning of the 28th on the Kubuk Plain near Melikshah village. The Battle of Ankara was about to begin. Numbers for the battle vary widely. A German chronicler captured after the battle gives figures for both armies at well over a million, while one modern what? author suggests neither numbered more than 20,000. Come on, it it's got to be. Timur had the larger army, and we can assume it was comparable in size to that which he invaded India with, around 90,000 men. Mo That's still a large force. Over a million is absolutely outrageous. 90,000 is a large force. And if that's the same on the other side, bloody hell. Most of Timur's army was mounted, fearsome Chagatai Turkic horse archers, supported by various subject peoples, such as mounted Turkmen, Iranian infantry, and Armenians picked up en route. Timur's army had a center, two wings and reserve, with a vanguard before each section and Timur leading the center. Okay. His left was led by his youngest son, Shah Rukh, and the right by his oldest living son, Miran Shah. The reserve was led by his grandson and heir, Muhammad Sultan. Ahead of the entire army was a row of 32 war elephants from India, clad in bright trappings, housing archers and naphtha throwers, and with swords fastened to their tusks, they were a living rampart to terrify the enemy. Mm. Bayezid's force was smaller, perhaps 60,000 mainly dismounted men. Bayezid commanded the center, protected by his personal guard, archers, three of his sons, and a crack corps of janissaries. Okay. His son Suleiman commanded the left wing, made up of Romelian troops and a large body of Tartars. Another son, Mehmed, commanded the rear guard, and the right wing was under the command of his vassal and brother-in-law, Stefan Lazarevich of Serbia, commanding Anatolian infantry and 5,000 Serbian heavy cavalry. Hmm. At 10 a.m., Timur dismounted and prayed for victory. Sources differ on who attacked first, but we know that the battle was initially joined between the Ottoman left and Timur's right. Fighting was fierce, and the Romelians were hard pressed, but managed to hold their ground despite enemy elephants and okay. their own weariness okay. and thirst. Nice. Well, wow. also Timur nice for Timur. His left wing to attack the Serbs on the Ottoman right. However, the knights of Stefan Lazarevich were the troops with the heaviest armor on the field, so they not only offered fierce resistance, but were able to turn the tide. The Serbs started gaining the upper hand and Timur's forces in front of them started to retreat, with Stefan driving them all the way to the Timurid lines. Mm. Some sources claim that the Serbs overextended themselves, 
some that Bayezid ordered them to stop in order to not get surrounded. In any case, soon the Timurid left was supported by half of the reserve, and Stefan was pushed back and to the left, which opened up the right side of Bayezid's center. However, as usual, Timur had more aces in his sleeve. Timur had been in touch with Bayezid's Tartars long before the battle, and had persuaded them that he was their true leader. The Tartar auxiliaries on the left flank suddenly changed sides, joining nice Timur for and attacking Timur. the rear of the already wavering Romalians. Holy there shit. No that this change... Having those people come to round to your side is just so useful. Your side was planned by Timur from the get-go. Mm. Bayezid's son Mehmed, who was commanding the reserve, responded by attacking the Tartars from the rear, and although that alleviated some of the pressure on the Ottoman left, the numbers were on the Timurid's side, and the Romalians continued to give ground. With defeat almost certain, Bayezid's heir, Suleiman, struck back at the Tartars and broke through them, starting his retreat. Stefan Lazarevich, who just learned that the Anatolians also betrayed their cause, disengaged the battered Timurid left and attacked them from the rear, oh. cutting his way through to the Sultan and urging him to flee while there was still time. Scorning his advice, Bayezid instead retreated to the hill of Katotepe behind the Ottoman lines, and there with his janissaries and some Serbs from the right wing, prepared to make a stand that would at least cover his heir's retreat. Most of the Serbs also retreated, either ordered by Bayezid or Stefan. Sacrifice himself for these heir, fair enough. But... Rejecting as dishonourable the suggestion that he should attempt to escape in disguise, the Sultan fought shoulder to shoulder with his men, <clears throat> axe in hand. Time and again Timur's men charged, time and again the Ottomans threw them back. The gallant but hopeless defence went on for some hours until darkness began to fall, and with Suleiman safe, Bayezid's thoughts at last turned to flight. With 300 or so cavalry, he tried to break out to the east. Timur's men, fearing that the greatest prize of all might yet elude yeah, them, they, they go after him. and the Sultan was captured when his horse stumbled and threw him. Mm. With his capture, the Ottoman disaster was complete. At sunset on the 29th what a slaughter. July, Bayezid was brought in bonds to Timur and the garrison of Ankara soon surrendered. No contemporary source has Bayezid held in a cage, and Timur ordered Bayezid's bonds removed. Still, Bayezid was a prisoner and spent the remainder of his life in Timur's hold. Interesting. The lost more than 30,000 in this battle against 15,000 casualties for Timur. The victor of Nicopolis was subject to the whims of the great emir, leaving his empire to suffer a 10-year civil war between his sons. Oh, wow. Timur now had free reign over western Anatolia. The rest of 1402 was spent pillaging across the region. Bursa, the former Ottoman capital, was taken and Mutahatan's family released. Many Ottoman troops escaped Timur's clutches on Genoese and Venetian galleys, happy to accept payment to transfer them across mm -hmm. the straits. One Timurid source reports that envoys from Constantinople arrived in autumn 1402, bearing tribute and gifts, sparing the isolated city. In December, Timur attacked the Hospitaller fortress of Smyrna, which refused demands to convert to Islam. Arrows and naphtha were sent over the walls, which soon collapsed from Timurid sapping. Accepting the submission of a few Frankish-held islands like Chios, in spring 1403, Timur began to withdraw. In March, the death of Bayezid, possibly through suicide, was soon followed by the death of Timur's grandson and heir, mm. Mohammed Sultan bin Jahangir. Oh, His no. loss was a blow to Timur. News of the great victory over mighty Bayezid brought gifts from the Emperor of Trebizond, the Mamluks, and the Georgian king, Georgi VII. Timur was looking for a target to take his grief out upon, and rebuffed Georgi's gifts, attacking Georgia late in 1403. Only the gifts of vast herds of Man was hurting that much, he went and ransacked another fucking country, because his heir died, fucking hell. ...and coins minted in Timur's name, finally appeased the old conqueror, who wintered again in Azerbaijan, dangerously close to Georgia. 
by summer 1404, Timur was back in Samarkand, soon preparing for his greatest campaign, an invasion of Ming Dynasty China. While assembling his forces, messengers arrived from Tokhtamish. Apologetic and regretful of the strife between them, Tokhtamish asked once more for cooperation with Timur, this time against Edigu, the puppet master Timur had left behind in the Golden Horde, who had since grown too independent. Ah. Timur accepted, making promises to aid Tokhtamish, and sent a response with friendly terms. Interesting, I wonder what's going to happen with that then. Setting out for China at the end of November 1404, the harsh winter weather proved hard on the aging Timur, who fell mm -hmm. ill. In late January 1405, they reached Otra, the first Khwarezmian city attacked by the Mongols in 1219. Timur worsened, and on the 18th of February, at around 70 years old, he died. His final orders had been to keep his death a secret, appointing his grandson, Pir Muhammad bin Jahangar, his successor, and to continue campaigning in Mughalistan. Interesting. Is that News what happened? His death quickly broke out uh. and the campaign was abandoned. Another grandson, Cahil Sultan, fought Pir Muhammad for the throne. It was not until 1409 that Timur's final living son, Shah Rukh, was able to claim Samarkand and establish sovereignty, but by then the damage was done. Shah Rukh mm. maintained an uneasy rule over the empire until his death in 1447, the assassination of his son and successor Uluq Beg in 1449, bringing an end to whatever remained of Timurid unity. Within a few years, the Timurids were pushed from most of Iran, while Uzbek and Karakayinlu incursions struck deep into what remained. Interesting. By the 1500s, the Uzbeks seized the northern half of the Timurid domains, leaving them a fractured collection of princes in eastern Khorasan. One prince displaced by the Uzbeks, Babur, found refuge in Kabul, where he began invading India, the beginnings of the Mughal Empire. Ah. In the end, Timur's empire proved a pale shadow to that of Chinggis Khan, as his legacy did not last. That That is true. Even though he done a lot, and I think he is up there with Mongol, the problem with it, uh, Mongol, uh, with Geng Genghis Khan, is that, um, is that he's not really known about. I didn't really know about him at all, which is a shame. I think he done a lot, and he was quite impressive to me. Once again, thanks to March of And that is the end of that episode. I'm definitely looking forward to finding out what Kings and Generals have in store for me for the next episode of this series. I'm enjoying it so much and I'm looking forward to the next one. I hope you guys are as well. If you are, you know what to do. You need to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, but I will catch you in the next video.